Welcome to the third webinar in the IT for Dental Professionals series. My name is Derek Watson. I'm a dentist with a keen interest in IT, which I hope will rub off on a few of you. In the first webinar we covered word processing and email and in the second we covered scanning and file formats. Let's have a look at what we're going to cover in this third webinar in the series. A good mission statement for dentistry is to do good dentistry, make money and have fun. Most practices have no problem with the good dentistry and having the fun bit, it's looking after the money that's a problem. Here is a screenshot of a typical spreadsheet, in this case Microsoft Excel. Here's a screenshot of another spreadsheet program, this time it's the free Calc, which is part of OpenOffice, and as you can see it's pretty much the same. The purpose of spreadsheets is to manipulate numbers in the same way that a word processor manipulates letters. Every box or cell can contain a number and you can add, subtract, divide or multiply the boxes to get a result in another box. If you're no good at math then don't worry because spreadsheets were designed to make math easier. Let's go to a live spreadsheet and do a quick demo. Here we can see a blank spreadsheet from Excel and let's give you an example of what it can do. If we just type some numbers into the boxes here at random, one of the most common things you might want to do is add those up and so there is in fact a button that does that if we select all those numbers and the blank square underneath, which is where we want the result, we go to the home and click on this little um, epsilon thing and that will cause the sum of the numbers to be put in the box at the bottom. So obviously very easy to add numbers up. If we want to do multiplication, we select a blank box, we type an equals and then we tell it what we'd like to do. So in this case we'll multiply this square here which is the square C2 and we put a, a multiplication sign which is an asterisk and we multiply it for example by C4, press enter and then we'll get the result. Same for division, it's equals a number divided by another number, enter and get the result. When you're dealing with spreadsheets you're really just dealing with numbers and so you don't need to worry too much about the decimal places. You just put in the raw numbers and then the formatting it handles things like uh, pound signs and decimal places. So for example if we wanted these figures here to be currency figures then we could just click on the currency symbol and it will automatically put them into currency format. If we wanted them to be formatted to two decimal places then we can remove the currency formatting by asking for a general formatting and then increasing the number of decimal places or decreasing them by clicking on these either one of these two buttons. Now that's all very interesting but let's look at something a little bit more interesting. Let's look at meeting expenses and here we have a, a spreadsheet which has been designed to work out whether or not a meeting is going to make it a profit or not. So in this column here we have all the money in and in this column here we have all the money out and for example, we have got 10 trade stands at uh, bringing £250 each, making a total of £2,500. Now the 10 you can just type in, the £250 is just typed in, that's the cost of the trade stand. This cell, however, is calculated and if you look up here you can see it's the product of the 10 times the 250 making £2,500. We've got income from sponsors there and then we've got income from delegates and then uh, giving us a total in here and then out here we've got all the expenses out and you can see we've got about 25,000 in, we've got about 20,200 out and that's giving us a profit of 4,717. Now the power of spreadsheets really comes in just uh, being able to change them so for example if this sponsor decided to give us 1,700 pounds instead of 1,500 pounds Notice, or if I type 1,700 in there, you'll notice that the profit goes uh, straight away up to 4,900. It's put it that extra 200 pounds, drops straight down to the bottom line. So if you change a figure, then all the other figures which are affected by it are also changed, and that's, that's what they call a ripple effect. Another thing we can do is make it more obvious whether or not we're making a profit or a loss, and you do that through a thing called conditional formatting. So if we look at the, the bottom line figure here, profit and loss, we can uh, uh, tell the spreadsheet to format it if it's greater than zero, to do it in green, and if it's less than zero, to do it in red.
Okay, so it's pretty. Uh, it's a bit more obvious now, of course. Um, this is a very simple example, of course, but um, uh, th this can be used to highlight figures which are outside their parameters. And if we now, I, I, it's not realistic, but let's say we put a figure of minus twenty thousand in here, just to get that to change red. You'll notice that immediately. We've gone red because we've made a loss. So let's put that to back to one thousand five hundred, which is where it was originally. Now, um, another quite a cool thing which I can show you that you can do with spreadsheets is that um, you can work backwards in a way. So, for example, uh, it's all very good if you know the inputs and you want to know an output, such as the likely profit, but what about when you know the result you want but you don't know how to get it? So, for example, let's take the champagne here. Uh, we've got 40 bottles of champagne, £25 a head, and let's suppose we want to treat the... Uh, treat the top table and we want to know how expensive can we go with the champagne before we wipe out the profit so uh, what you could do is of course you could uh, just keep typing in figures here and looking at the profit and seeing and sort of uh, estimating it but there's a much quicker way to do that um, and what we need to do is go to the data and then the what if analysis and I use a function called goal seek which, in other words, we're looking. That the goal that we're seeking is zero profit. So, if we put that figure into the cell, the the goal we're looking for, and the goal is zero, and then we're going to have to change another cell to try and get that to zero. And that cell that we're going to change is going to be the cost of the champagne. So, if I click on OK, all that trial and error will be done instantly. You'll see that the profits vanished, and the champagne is now 142 pounds 94 pence a bottle. So. What we can say from that, and I know it's a bit of a flippant example, is that we can say that, uh, providing we don't go over uh, £140 a bottle for the champagne, we're still going to make a profit. And uh, it, it's done it right down to the 94 pence, which, of course, would, would take you considerable time to do that if you try to do it by trial and error. Now, you might think that a spreadsheet would be the perfect program to keep your accounts. And it would certainly make all the adding up easier, but the financial management of a business involves paying staff and reconciling bank accounts and a lot of repetitive work like paying direct debits which would be very laborious if you did it all yourself on a spreadsheet so there's a special type of program that does this this is a program called QuickBooks which is a commercial program and costs about 50 pounds a month on a monthly subscription this will do pretty much everything including payroll and is automatically updated so you always have the latest version there are plenty of money management programs and a lot of them are free but if you're going to manage a business with a turnover in excess of £100,000 a year, then please don't rely on free software. One day you will be able to, but we're not there yet. Let's uh, start off by entering a bill. So we'll click on Enter Bills, and it's asking us which supplier. So if I just tell them it's Henry Shine. Now, as you can see, Henry Shine is not in the supplier list. So we'll need to set them up and we've got two options we can either set them up in full by clicking there in which case it'll want the um, all the details including telephone numbers contacts and address or what we can do is we can just uh, do a quick addition now all it's done is it's uh, put Henry Shine in the suppliers list which allows us to put them in a, in that field on the bill without worrying about all the telephone numbers and stuff like that so and once you set suppliers up once then obviously you don't need to do it for every bill uh, and let's say that we've got a bill for a thousand pounds due uh, now the dates as you see are, are set for 31st December 2014 that's because this is just a sample set of accounts so it's not realistic that that's the way they've done the dates it has worked out that the bill is due on the 10th of January 2015 so obviously they're on something like two weeks um, payment terms and lastly we need to specify which account we're going to put it in so I think we've already got a materials account, so I'm going to use that, and that's where on the uh, profit and loss and the balance sheet, obviously you want all the materials suppliers bills to go in the materials heading, because this thing produces your accounts for you. So if we save and close that, now it says that they haven't been assigned a class, and I'll come back to classes later, um, because classes are extremely useful. That's, what we could do is we could set up a class here, you'll see that they've got some classes set up, and we can set up a new class and then let's say we'll set up NHS as a class 
and uh, there you see it's assigned to National Health Service so we do save and close and that's now recorded. Now when the time comes to pay the bills and you can do this once a month you just click on pay the bills it shows you everybody um, who you owe money to and down the bottom here you can see that we owe there's the money to owe to Dental Directory there's the money owed to Henry Shine and uh, you literally just tick which bills you want to pay and you click um, pay the bills and uh, type in the check numbers and uh, press a button and they will come out of the uh, laser printer ready for you to check and sign. So let's uh, not bother about recording those bill payments because as I say it's only a sample bit of accounts. So just going back to classes quickly, using classes uh, means you can get some very useful information out of your accounts. If you allocate all of your income and expenses either to the class national health service or the class private then you can work out where you're making a profit. If you create a class for each of your employees then you can tell how much profit each clinician is making and if you own several practices and you create a class for each practice then you can tell which are profitable. So let's look at the sort of financial reporting we can get out. Well if we go to reports and then company and financial we can get a profit and loss uh, account out straight away and this uh, as you can see in the highlighted boxes for this month to date, but it can be for any period. So we can do, for example, uh, this financial year to date. And uh, we can see there that we've got sales of 460,000 uh, and total income in the year of about 500,000. So obviously this uh, Monty's uh, Dental Repair Shop is doing pretty well. And a profit for the year of 370,000. So the good thing about these figures is that every one of them, if you want to know how they're made up, you can literally, with this uh, spyglass with a, with a Q on, uh, with a Z on it, you can just literally double click on and it will analyze that figure. So that figure of 4,800, which was in the profit and loss account, is now, we can see that it's 12 checks uh, to the handyman Tom Hurlbut for cleaning, um, 12 400 pound checks. Uh, if you can go to the extent of literally of uh, working out how the profit for the year is made up if you like that three hundred and seventy thousand pounds is is all completely listed there I'm sorry if the uh, writing's a little bit small um, I hope it's legible anyway but you get the idea um, so of course this is extremely useful this sort of drill down facility now the other thing you can do with these programs no need to save that is pay the employees so we go to the payroll center and uh, this will handle absolutely anything. This will handle give as you earn, it will handle pension payments, it will handle student loan repayments, etc., etc. And it's constantly updated with the HMRC payroll table, so, so your calculations are automatic and always accurate. So if we go to what we call an unscheduled payroll, which is just a one-off, and there, here you can see all the employees are listed and uh, there's uh, there's quite a few employees so there's more than one screen worth of employees I'm going to check them all I think we've already run this payroll uh, so what we need to do is perhaps uh, pay them for another month seeing as they don't exist I don't suppose it matters uh, so we'll check them all and then we'll continue now it's telling me that uh, the payroll calculations will be correct because it's a sample file so uh, of course that's fair enough uh, and now it's giving me a warning that time data hasn't been entered for one or more employees. So um, the good thing about that, this is that you can, for example, if you pay your employees hourly, then uh, you can enter in how many hours at payroll time. If we open the payroll detail for Alvin Lee, we can see that uh, he is on uh, salaried and he's paid £2,916. And... Uh, I doubt if that's an hour, so I presume that's a month, so we'll put in one month's salary and you'll see that um, his payroll is now uh, calculated and we can save and close that. Well, when you're finished, you click on create payments and ignoring all these messages and all of those will be posted to the bank account and if you go, if we go to the um, bank account, which we can do by going to the current account in the account balances just double clicking on that everything in here you just double click and you can see here that we've got a load of uh, payroll payments here so 
it really is as easy as that and it will it will print payslips and uh, also it will submit your end of year payroll to HMRC electronically providing that you're registered with HMRC for that. Now one last thing I'll show you on this is another thing that you'll be using all the time and that's accounts receivable so we do reports and we'll do receivables and the account receivable aging summary and what that does is that literally tells you who's got an outstanding bill and uh, how long has it been outstanding so for example uh, Anand Kumar here has a bill for 124 pounds nine, uh, 55 pence and it's one to 30 days overdue which means that assuming he's got 30 days credit that means it's it's 30 to 60 days now since uh, the invoice was written um, we've got someone here uh, Anne Marie's motor engines she's got a, a current uh, bill of 63,450 pounds but more worryingly there's a 47,000 pounds worth of um, bills overdue for more than 90 days so once again using drill down just double click on that and we can find out what that was for and it's uh, basically it looks like last four quarters invoices uh, haven't been paid at all and uh, one of those is uh, you can the aging uh, gives you the days and so you can see that the the most recent one of those is a year old and the the oldest one is um, nearly two years old so obviously you need to get cracking on with collecting that so that's how to prevent um, money owing turning into uh, a, a bad debt let's have a look at one last report company and financial we've done the profit and loss we'll look at the balance sheet and uh, we can see there if we go down to the bottom we see how much uh, Monty's dental repair shop is worth and you can see that he, there's about 132,000 pounds in uh, in value in the company but if you look at last year you see that the retained earnings that the earnings that were brought forward from last year was minus 237,000 so he, he, Monty was completely insolvent last year and it's only the fact that he's made a profit of £370,000 this year that's put him in the black. So um, once again, if you wanted to find out uh, anything about that figure, then you can double-click and drill down. So uh, it's a tremendous uh, management tool and a bit complicated and a bit confusing when you first um, look at it, but quite easy to uh, work out after that. All of this, of course, would be impossible with a spreadsheet. There are other mainstream programs such as Sage, but I've found QuickBooks to be the most user-friendly in a dental context. Being able to press a button and see all your bills paid automatically is a great time saver. And finding out how your business has done financially six months after the year end isn't a good way, obviously, to run a business. So, to summarize, we looked at spreadsheets and the sort of problems that they can solve, and then we looked at financial management programs and what they can do. As I mentioned, I'll send everyone a link to the content mentioned in the webinar and a copy of my email address for further inquiries. The next DFO webinar in the IT series is on Wednesday the 5th of December at 1.10pm and it will cover the steps you need to take to safeguard your data for when your computer fails and how to get help when you need it. Other training you might be interested in are the Financial Friday series. The next speaker will be Sarah Smith from Money for Dentists who will talk about how gender affects financial planning that's on Friday December the 14th at 1:10. conveniently designed to fit in your lunch hour and of course free CPD for all webinars is available for DFO and DPA members and that about wraps it up so thanks for your time and attention